Welcome to the 1964 and 1965 World's Fair, held in the vibrant city of New York. This grand exposition of human achievement captured the hearts and minds of millions who flocked to witness the wonders of the future. The theme for the fair was peace through understanding. In 1964, set against the backdrop of the Cold War and the space race, this fair aimed to foster harmony among nations, celebrating cultural diversity, technological innovation, and scientific progress. It became a beacon of hope, a place where dreams and possibilities converged. The fair was immense, with an astonishing 150 uniquely designed pavilions, offering everything from visions of the future to Jurassic Park-style dinosaur battles, to canoe rides through replicas of exotic island paradises. It spanned nearly 650,000 acres. The fair ran from mid-April to mid-October in both 1964 and 1965 in Flushing Meadows Park in Queens. Buoyed by childhood memories of the 1939 New York World's Fair and hopeful to spur an economic boon for New York, a group of businessmen got the ball rolling. City planner and fair organizer Robert Moses, along with architect Philip Johnson and artist Donald Delu, spearheaded a team of engineers and artists to develop an unrivaled modern day marvel. Moses also enlisted the help of creative mastermind, Walt Disney. Disney, the maestro of enchantment and imagination, used the 1964 World's Fair as a testing ground, setting the stage for future endeavors such as Epcot. Among the fair's iconic attractions, It's a Small World emerged as a triumph of creativity and unity. This beloved boat ride transported visitors on a whimsical journey through various countries, accompanied by the infectious melody that would forever linger in our hearts. Walt Disney himself, deeply inspired by the fair's message of global harmony, infused the ride with a celebration of cultural diversity and the power of unity. This enchanting experience proved pivotal, providing a glimpse into the magic that would later come to life within Disney's ambitious theme world projects, including the groundbreaking Epcot, where the spirit of It's a Small World continues to thrive in all its glory. The fair witnessed the debut of numerous groundbreaking technologies. For the first time, Visitors glimpsed the wonders of touch-tone telephones, picture phones, and even early versions of video calls. The Bell system showcased their version of a communication-rich future, allowing people to connect like never before. It was a pivotal moment, a glimpse into the world that awaited us. The Unisphere, an imposing stainless steel globe stood as the fair's symbol and enduring legacy. Representing the unity of mankind, this colossal structure, standing 140 feet tall, captivated visitors with its striking design. At the time, the Unisphere was the largest globular structure ever built by man. To this day, it stands as a testament to human cooperation and a reminder of the fair's noble aspirations. One of the most popular attractions was the Futurama 2 exhibit by General Motors, a visionary ride through the world of tomorrow. With an impressive audio-visual presentation, visitors marveled at the highways, cities, and futuristic landscapes, hinting at a world yet to come. It ignited the imagination and left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of its attendees. 
Among the notable attractions at the fair, Ford's Magic Skyway soared to new heights of automotive innovation. This captivating ride took visitors on a mesmerizing journey through time, showcasing the evolution of transportation. As guests embarked on their adventure, they found themselves aboard Ford vehicles, including the much-anticipated debut of the Ford Mustang. With its sleek design and powerful engine, the Ford Mustang became an instant sensation. Its introduction at the World's Fair heralded a new era of American automobile culture, symbolizing freedom, style, and a sense of limitless possibilities. Another revolutionary introduction was the personal computer, showcased by IBM. This marked the early steps towards the digital age that we now inhabit. The fair also showcased cultural diversity, with pavilions representing various nations. Visitors indulged in the rich tapestry of art, music, and cuisine from around the world. Many were able to taste falafel, kimchi, hummus, tandoori chicken, and Turkish coffee and sangria for the first time. The most popular, however, was one delectable delight that took the culinary world by storm, the iconic Belgian waffle. First introduced to America at Seattle's World Fair in 1962, this tasty treat made its East Coast debut. Nestled within the fair's international restaurant row, the tantalizing aroma of freshly baked waffles wafted through the air, enticing visitors with their golden, crispy exteriors and their fluffy, melt-in-your-mouth interiors. Served with a generous dollop of whipped cream and a sprinkling of succulent berries, the Belgium waffle became an instant sensation. The pavilions offered all sorts of new experiences for fairgoers. In the Korean pavilion, you could dine in a tea house. In the African pavilion, you could dine in a tree house, observing caged wild animals with stunning diamonds on display. The Minnesota pavilion offered over 100 items on their buffet, things like venison, pheasant, and pike. Not to be outdone was their neighbor Wisconsin, featuring a 17-ton cheese wheel. It was the world's biggest and it was covered with glass to protect it from mice. At the American Express Pavilion, you could see a money tree, literally a million dollars of cash on a tree. Too bad they never figured out how to actually grow that one. <laughs> you could also step back in time to 1904 New York, complete with cobblestones, gas lights, and a barbershop quartet. If you got too tired, you could take a nap in one of the many rest alcoves, or you could even go to church in the Billy Graham Pavilion. Helicopters regularly traveled between Wall Street and the fair's heliport, some 120 feet high. Rides were $8, which is about $65 today. This allowed fairgoers to arrive in style, if you had the funds to do so. You could also arrive via hydrofoil boat to the fair marina. A staggering 51 million people attended the New York World's Fair in 1964 and 1965. The fair was unique for its forward-thinking mindset and its ability to captivate audiences with an incredible vision of tomorrow. It instilled a sense of wonder, fostering a collective optimism for the future. Whether you were fortunate enough to experience this grand spectacle firsthand, or you're merely discovering it at this point in history, the New York World's Fair remains a beacon of hope and inspiration, reminding us that peace, understanding, and human progress are eternal pursuits today as they were in 1964 and 1965. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. 
be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana. <laughs>